Okay. So, this video is dedicated to my um, seventh grade girls because they found my videos. And it's not to say that, um, like, it, like, I even mind because I told some of the eighth grade, you know, kids that I had, you know, YouTube channel, so it wasn't like it was that big a deal, um, you know. Um, but they just thought it was, um, hilarious. And, um, and I don't know what they thought my reaction was going to be when they, you know, they told me that I, you know, they saw my video, like I was going to be, like I was going to start crying or something or whatever. Um, I mean, initially, like, I know, like, the stuff I'm talking about is very personal and everything, but it's, it is what it is. You know, um, it can't be any worse than, you know, the videos that most of them watch anyway, um, because I watch Jeffree Star and I watch James Charles and I know what they talk about. So what I talk about is nothing in comparison to what those guys talk about. But it's interesting because, um, I knew this day would come <laughs> and, and it's fine because it's, it's like I remember um, what it was like before YouTube and technology and, and cell phones and things like that. And just the thought of seeing my teacher talk about her personal life and dealing with things um, wouldn't be a surprise to me because I had a teacher. She was my favorite teacher, Miss Gilbert. She taught AP English my 12th grade year, and she was my, she is by far my favorite teacher. Um, she was real strict, and she was so funny. She had, like, this dry sense of humor, so if you weren't, um, you had to be really quick with it to understand her humor, and when she would say things, it would go over some people's heads, and it was just hilarious to see uh, who would get it and who wouldn't. So her class is one. I'll tell you why I loved her class because she was real. Um, she was serious about English and she was good at it. She taught college and I just thought that was the coolest. Um, I was like, oh yeah, she teaches college and she's teaching us. Like, wow. And she knew because I felt like, okay, so she knows what it's going to be like in college. So I trusted like when she told us we are going to write every day because that's what you do in college. You write all the time. So it wasn't like a shock to me when I got to college because she prepared us and she was really tough. And so, but I, the thing I like about her class the most was that she was very, um, she talked about her life, you know, outside of school. And she, to me, she was a real person. You know, I actually talked to her after I graduated and everything to tell her how I became a teacher. She actually was the reason why I became an English teacher and not a history teacher because initially I wanted to teach history and um and so she was the one that kind of coaxed me into to going into English and saying that you gotta do both like with English you do have to have a background with history like in high school middle school it's like it's not the same but so so Miss Gilbert she was one of those teachers that she used to just talk about risque stuff all the time and I loved her because she just, I don't know, like she was really real and she was divorced and it was like, that was taboo at that time, you know, and she was in her fifties and she looked good for her age. And I remember the boys talking about she had a nice rack and I'm like, y'all are just gross. Boys are so gross. Well, um, but yeah, she would talk about her ex-husband and it was just funny. Like she was just... I don't know, like, I just, I liked her because she's down to earth, and she was just, like, a real person to me, you know? Um, sometimes I think students don't see their teachers as real people with real lives. So, like, when, um, you know, the thought of students seeing, you know, what I talk about, I'm just, like, they, they gotta know I'm a real person, you know? I, like, live a life just like their parents. I'm probably a lot of their parents' age, you know? And so... It's like, sometimes 
you know, in order for people to understand you better, they do need to know a little about it, been about you. And I don't have a whole lot of time to talk about my personal life because it's just like too much going on, not enough time in the block. And so that's why I like block scheduling because the blocks are longer. So you can, you know, you could do more stuff. So I thought about what I would say um, to um, that class of girls. And this is what I want to say. Um, basically middle school prepares you for real life. And I remember like people saying that and I'm like, that's just bogus. It doesn't really change when you become an adult, to be honest with you. Um, obviously nothing is like middle school and never will be. And thank God for that. Cause I hated middle school, but it's like, what you learn as far as who, who you are as a human being and who you're going to be in life really is kind of kind of settled in a way by that point. You know, you start feeling who you are. Um, it's just a pivotal point in life. And, and if you're going to be a good person, that's usually established then. If you're going to be a bad person, that's usually established then. If you're going to be, you know just a real crummy person that's usually established in middle school because I found that people don't change, you know, they are who they are, you know, people who are super sweet back then are still sweet people, you know? And so it's like, you can still decide who you want to be and what you want to be now, because typically once you get to high school, it's over. I mean, you just kind of get your group of people and you stick with them those four years and then you go off to college and that's pretty much it. You know, you start your life. And I would say, like, for me, middle school was the worst because I had to deal with, you know, colorism issues. You know, kids were, they made fun of me because I had dark skin and, you know, um, and I had longer hair than I do now. It's, like, long. And so um, girls would, like, pull my hair and stuff like that. And I'm just, like, it was just so stupid and um, just, you know, being made fun of and, and it was just sad to me because I was smart and I loved school. I didn't like math. I, I hated math because I wasn't good, real good in it. But I just didn't understand why people couldn't just be normal. Like, I just didn't understand, like, why if I'm minding my own business, why you can't just mind your own business? Like, you know what I'm saying? If I'm not bothering you, why are you bothering me? You know, like, I'm not talking about you why are you talking about me? Like, it's just, it does, it never made any sense and it doesn't change. You know what I mean? It's like adults are like that, you know? So it's like, and they were probably like that in middle school. And so it's like, choose who you want to be now. Um, because it's like the same girls that did all of the talking, um, uh, making fun of me, like one minute, they're my friend, next minute, they're not. You know, it was sad because it was a predominantly black school and it was the white kids that really befriended me because they didn't care about who I was. If I talked, quote unquote, white, um, if I thought I was, you know, whatever, because I wanted to be smart. I just didn't see being dumb and acting dumb and thinking playing around in class was what being black was about. I just thought that was ignorant, you know, AF. You know, and it's like my parents taught me. They were, they grew up in the um, integration area, and and it was like there was no playing around in school because they knew what it was like to not have good you know educations and how hard it was for blacks to have you know to be in good schools. And so it's just like I don't see the point of acting dumb when society already puts it like black people are dumb. So you are going to continue with the stereotype. That didn't make any sense to me. You know, it's like, why go along with what society says about you? You know, it just didn't make any sense. And so, um, the crazy thing is the girls that did all that talking, I, I went to college and all and everything. And I would come back to visit my family and I would see these girls, you know, cause it's like, they stayed in the community. They didn't go nowhere. 
they didn't go to nobody's college. They got pregnant. They they just stayed in the area. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, I know they had better plans for their lives. But because they made bad decisions when we were in school, they continue to make those same type of bad decisions as they got older. So when I see, you know, when I see old girl made fun of the, the ringleader working, and I'm in college, working at McDonald's, and I was like, I'm about to graduate with a degree, and I'm about to have a job when I get out of here, a career, and we're the same age, and this is where you're working. You're not the manager. You're not in, you know, any kind of leadership role. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like I felt sorry for it. There's nothing wrong with working at McDonald's, but I worked at McDonald's when I was 14, when I was in high school. You know, actually middle school. I was in like just turned 14, so I was in eighth grade. And I worked at McDonald's in Kmart, making 4.75 an hour, and then up to like five dollars, five twenty-five was what I got up to. Um, you could work at 14 um, with a work permit, with your parents' permission, and so it was like so. I worked all during school. You know, I worked at Kroger when I was in high school. I worked at Ryan's when I was in college. I worked at, you know, um, M&M Mars um, factory when I was in college because I didn't have parents that were going to pay for everything. So it's like I didn't have a choice but to be smart. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like when you see people who seem to have it together now and they, they're the ones making fun of you and everything like that, it's like, if they don't learn that that's not what life is about, they're going to continue. I believe in karma. It does come back, and it does come back hard on you. It doesn't matter how old you are. And so, you know, I say that all to say, make good choices. Make Sorry, make good choices now. Be good people. Treat people well. When you're jerks, you make fun of people, you're mean to people, I promise you it will come back. All those girls that did that, they don't have good lives right now. And I had some that came back to apologize to me, you know. So it's like you have the choice to be anything you want to be, but make that choice now. You know, because one day, like the teachers that you give a hard time, like if you want to have some, you know, some jobs require the people to come back to middle school and elementary school to see what type of person you are, because they want to see like mentally, you know, what you're capable of, what your mannerisms, what your personality, what your um, your manner of attitude is and will be to work with certain folks. So burn bridges if you want to. You don't do it, you know. Um. I remember I, I read in my diary about, you know, not wanting to live. I was 13, you know. I thought I was fat. I was 130 pounds. I was 5'7". I was the same height I am now in middle school. And I just, 130 pounds. Like, I would kill to be 130 pounds right now. But I thought I was fat because I was just going through puberty, you know. And it was just like, you know, getting made fun of. I thought my parents hated me, which was crazy. You know, it was just, you're going through so many hormonal moods and changes, you feel crazy. And I, when I read my little diary, I, I sound crazy too. But it's one of those things that as I um, got older, I realized that sometimes those things, you know, make you who you are. And I've learned to be good to people, treat people how I want to be treated, and good things will come back to you in the end so to you young ladies that want to be messy um you can continue watching my videos because i mean i won't I'm not gonna say anything bad you know so it ain't gonna be anything crazy but if you really want to know who i am continue watching them you know because i'm going through a journey in my life and, and it's not funny to me you know it's, it's my life. It's serious. And, you know, if you write anything down in your journals about your life, like, I would never laugh at it. And I would never think it was funny. So, it's like, think about how you treat people, what you say to people. 
okay because one day it might come back to you you know and um, I want you guys to be good people and and I'm always here to talk because I've been through all of it all of it and I remember middle school very well and it sucked <laughs> I, I don't know I just didn't like it high school was fun for me it was good times but um, I'm gonna leave it here and uh, you know you know it's just it is what it is and um, I hope you learned something from it and we'll keep it trucking and hopefully this corona doesn't um, get any worse <laughs> because I will be sitting here um, grading all of your work on my computer <laughs> so that's it. Peace. <laughs>